All right. I hope the process of intention got on to the other one as the ending chapter. But here we are in the next chapter. And uh, might as well keep going because uh, I feel really here prompted in this moment. There was a lot more that I had to say. So, the setting of intention. <laughs> all of that was brought through that. All of those amazing experiences. All the experiences that can be brought to us always are always brought through this phenomenal thing called the setting of intention through this amazing phenomenal resonance and so it taught us hot and cold he's hot she's cold he's the beginning she's the end i watched her grow infinitely old while she watched me grow infinitely young and i mean infinitely old she looked like she would fall apart and die at any moment her her skin becoming translucent shriveling shrinking uh losing all of the hair uh, from going from her age to a, an, an older, mature woman with her hair blowing and looking like Mother Earth herself, the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen in my life, and then onwards until the oldness, the oldness, losing the hair, losing the depiction, using the pigment to the skin, gray, lispous, oh my goodness, this, this old, beautiful, amazing being, the eyes staying true the whole time, this, oh my goodness. You look like the jaw would just fall off, the skin would just rip apart, but no, it did not, it did not ever, it did not ever die. It just continued on forever and ever, older and older, older and older, older and older. And this is the way of the female, this is the way of the end. It never does die, it never ends. It just continues onward, older and older, older and older, forever and always, limitlessly, infinitely. And she watched me do the same thing, but getting young. I can't imagine what that looked like. <laughs> And this was amazing. This is how we knew. Because I exuded golden rays of light. I was like the sun. Exuding all of this energy. The male. The solar plexus. However it was to be perceived. And she was the female. Violet, steaming energy. Quiet, subdued, silent. Wisdom. Not trying to figure anything out. He was like, what do I do? What do I do? How do I figure this out? Talking, 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 talking. Learning, 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 learning. To understand what it meant to be compassion and what it meant to be wisdom and how both of them together are how it works perfectly. She won't even do anything without him. And him, he'll do way too much without her. He won't know how to implement the skillful means that is the compassion that he moves with. But when she has compassion and her wisdom, she does everything perfectly. And the same thing with him. When he has compassion and wisdom, he does everything perfectly. One without the other do things in really strange and ignorant ways, but also are in perfection because these are things showing us, bringing us, leading us through our agitations to come into these pure places within ourselves to where we can understand the middle way, to where we come, can come into the balance, to where we can be centered always, and where we can finally really, really, really understand the truth of all beings and radiate that light outward for the rest of ourselves to see so that we can all be free, so that we can truly end the causes of all suffering, so that nobody ever again has to die through murder, through hate, through rape, whatever it is. Nobody has to be touching children. Nobody has to be doing these crazy things, you know, so that we can all finally be free from the suffering that is our ignorance, that is our indiscretion, that is our ego attachments, our grasping to reality to cause us to have to reflect these constant things to one another, to get us agitating and moving out of our laziness, out of our complacency, and into a place where we fully resonate with the truth of ourselves. No more judging ourselves, no more limiting and binding our energies and causing these frequencies to have to appear in the way that they do so that we will accept them and love them and allow their flow throughout all of life. This is amazing and perfect, phenomenal knowledge. And this knowledge couldn't have come to me any other way. You can look up the things that I'm telling you about and you can find that they're written in stone, that they're written in wisdom, that people have put these in scrolls. But I didn't find these through scrolls. I didn't find these through study. I didn't find these through a disciplined practice. Not in the same way that is traditional in most places. I was a Buddhist practitioner, but I found it in a state of meditation that was medicine ceremony through the setting of intention, through the following of my life path. Not just medicine ceremony. I integrated these things in amazing ways. I was paying attention to my surroundings. I used all of life as the guru. But the medicine teachers are the things that have accelerated me. And since I started them, people have said, no, you have to be able to do it on your own. And I've stopped for nearly a year of time or whatever it is, a long time. And it wasn't until I finally welcomed the medicine ceremony back that I grew exponentially. That whole year... I was working on one thing forever, bouncing back and forth in between myself, having a lot of difficulty, you know, okay, I'm in the meditation, I'm doing this, you know, I'm doing this, very difficult, very difficult, 
And finally, I welcomed medicine back into me, and I accelerated years, times of practice. Years and years of practice I accelerated. It's like, wow, what in the world? How did I accelerate so greatly, so amazingly, so immensely? So I can see the route of bravery and follow yourself. I'm not saying do it back to back every day. Follow your flow. Feel it for sure. There's times when I've wanted to have medicine ceremony every day, all day, every day. But I can see that the flow where it's brought me, it's brought me to very perfect situations in between that time to where I'm able to speak this and integrate this through the speaking of this, through the expressing of this and coming into the true knowledge of this experience that has just passed. And just yesterday I was able to do this. I was able to fully integrate it because I was able to reach a mirror of myself that could take upon itself these teachings in a really empowered fashion in a way that I haven't been able to transfer it over to others because they were not ready. Uh, from this point in their the level of their experience to take upon themselves these teachings in this really amazing way So they couldn't hold the channel open for me to express it and to see it because I don't sit there in my thought Remembering too much what I need to do is I need to have some kind of dialogue some kind of conversation some kind of information Transfer so that I do have the words not just for the transferring to you But the transferring to me it's like ah now I know how to speak this to myself that means I'm very grounded and balanced with this inside myself in a really amazing, phenomenal fashion. And I've been very lucky as to reach an amazing being yesterday, a phenomenal dragon sister, who I was able to transfer this energy as it was relevant to herself in the path and her journey, because I harmonize with everything. So wherever you're at, I'm going to meet you there. I'm not even going to have to try to do this. This happens naturally and authentically, and if I'm holding on to a past previous identity or a preference, then I'm going to become agitated and upset, and I'm going to turn away from you, I'm going to go away like, this isn't worth my time, I'm so great and mighty and powerful, you're making me downtrodden and you're causing me to be on your level, your low, evil, nasty, ugly, ignorant level, which is obviously a feeling that is egoic and arrogant and holding to form and preference when really I can be very flowy and versatile and be there for all of myself and have understanding for whatever part of myself is, wherever they are, because they're placed there perfectly, equally, into the surrender of all beings in the same way that I am, and here they are to be my teacher, to help me transfer energy and help me wake up myself fully. So it's bringing me patience, it's bringing me guidance, it's bringing me wisdom, it's giving me an opportunity to remain authentic in trust, in patience, and whatever it is, just to be fully authentic and genuine inside that moment and be there with that part of myself, not turning away from any part of myself, no matter where it is, I perceive them to be on their path so that I can truly benefit all of myself, all beings entirely, true warriorship of the heart, and it's an amazing, phenomenal thing, and I'm so grateful to be able to have this experience and to see these things in all these amazing ways, to be able to transfer this information to you now today, and uh, thank you so much for being with me always, I love you forever and always, no matter what, and um, and so yes, and so this experience with this girl was amazing, powerful, super phenomenal. We watched as, as fire hit ice and created the greatest of snow mandalas, and this to us both re made us realize that when one touches the other, it's the most beautiful thing that has ever happened. When the male and the female come together, there is no greater beauty. And so marrying the male and the female within ourselves doesn't mean just marrying the female without ourselves. But right here inside of ourselves, we are male and female right here, male, female, and they make heart. So coming into the male and the female to create the heart, the sphere before us, I have done this, we will do this, and to bring it into the physical embodiment, that is what I have done personally. I have not worked purely astral, but through all of my chakras in a centered and balanced way, spinning them all together so that I can embody it in this reality, in this physical reality, and understand it to a degree that many people still believe to be impossible, saying, oh no, this is something that comes after this life, this is something that happens only in the spirit, but I have understood that this body here is the spirit in the same way as anything we would imagine the spirit to be. So we are movable, we are malleable, we are constantly fluid we are able to change shape and form and move in ways that are seemingly impossible uh to beings today and it's amazing so super phenomenal super happy am i to be able to share this information with you now today in this way and uh okay so now we're on the amazing intention ceremony but this was the beginning after this uh 
realizing that we were beings that only meet once every 500 lifetimes, I realized that we were only meant to meet in that moment, that that was our opportunity to see one another and to meet with one another. Then we stayed together for a little longer, and I was like, man, I don't know that we're supposed to do this, and then I got really attached to it, like, we're really supposed to do this. I broke my heart, and all these ter terrible things happened, and all of this was the medicine. All of this was exactly what I needed. I needed to have my heart broken so deeply. I needed this wound to be open because that's where the light could rush in. That's where something could come to heal me. When I was standing too firm and too sturdy, then I would have stayed in my present reality forever. I had finally gone back home after years and years of being away and seeing my family, and then I was breaking down. I was working. I was doing great at this job, making a lot of money, and still it didn't matter. I was losing myself, I was breaking down, I was crying, it broke my heart so deeply, I, a pain so great, I had never felt it before, and I went to the medicine again, and I thought, man, the medicine can help me, it can give me another experience, the medicine did not help me, I took 20 hits, and I thought my brother had screwed me, I was like, this guy got me bunk stuff, and he was like, I assure you it's not the case, I yelled at him, I was mad at him, I was not happy with him, because it was awful, and it did not work, Not didn't matter how much of it I took, it did not work. That was my beautiful heart helping me. It was like, no, no, no. You cannot be in experience right now. Right now, you are way too hurt. You are way too distraught. This is not the time to go into this. This is not the way. And so it did not give me... It did not give me an experience. It was like, no. Not now. Not in this way. My heart blocked it. I felt this weird feeling like the whole time. I was like, ah. But no, no trip. No experience, no amazing blessing, nothing happened, because that was not the place for me. I was not to become complacent there. I needed to move. And so finally it rocked me so hard to where I couldn't be around my family anymore. I lost my job. I was freaking out, and so I left. And when I left, I felt a huge ease in my energy. When I went out, got on the road again, I felt so amazing. It was like that whole spot that I was in was putting a crazy amount of pressure on me so that I couldn't be comfortable, so that I would be forced into movement, so I would go where I needed to go exactly when I needed to be there. It didn't make me leave seconds before I needed to leave. It didn't make me leave seconds after, but precisely the exact time that I needed to go, I went. And how did it do this? It did this naturally. It just did this naturally. It created everything in me, all the thoughts within me, all the feelings within me, all the different things in my physical surroundings, all the different mere reflections of me to where I would move at that exact moment. Not because I was trying to move at the right moment, but because I naturally, it just happened on its own no matter what. And this is what occurs for absolutely everything. Everything is within a season of growth exactly where it needs to be, no matter how it may seem. This is a good way to come into a realization, to release all judgment of everything around us, to see it truly as perfect this person is doing this at this time because that's what needed for them to do and for other all other beings as well the beings that i was in that in contact with they needed to see me going through that they needed me to leave at the exact time that i did they needed all of these things to be happening as they did just as i needed all these things to be happening through them and through everything else we all are doing this for one another and it's an amazing thing to finally be able to see this in a phenomenal way i was brought into this years ago and so Finally, I'm able to share this with you, and I'm so happy to be able to do this. So I went down, I got connected with my dreams again. I got connected with a dream that had happened five years before. Uh, amazing dream, and, uh, and I was sure that it was the time of this dream. My grandma was talking about being Christian, but reincarnation, and this brought me back into this huge place, and I got back into a meditative stance with the trees breathing. And then I finally decided to follow my feeling like I had before. For eight months of my life, I had followed my feeling with God. And I had gone down this road just because I felt like it. You know, I had gone this way just because I had felt like it. Uh, before, I had also went into a walking meditation where I was able to feel with my hands, the energy in my hands. And wherever my energy felt more in my hand, I would follow that feeling. So I really learned how to follow my intuitive guidance how to follow a wisdom, a teaching that was different than my mind. So maybe my mind wanted to go this way because of this, but I wanted to make sure I felt, and was like, okay, but where do I need to go? My mind says that way, but I don't know, you know, it's, what's the hand say? And I was like, okay, it is this way. And then I found this amazing uh, gravestone where a man's name was Bill, and I was looking for my spirit guide, Bill, uh, that night, and I was only leaning on a tree just to kind of relaxed and I was like man maybe I'll sit by this tree and attain enlightenment like the Buddha 
And I said, oh, money, pod me home to these cockroaches that day. And cockroaches were, like, the worst thing in the world to me. And so I was like, oh, money, pod me home, realizing to have the compassion of the Dalai Lama. And I, and I put my arm against the tree just to lean and relax. And I was like, maybe I could sit here and meditate and, and uh, meet my spirit guide or, or become enlightened like the Buddha just right here. But it was in the middle of a block, in the middle of night. I was like, no, somebody would call the cops on me. I can't just be here right now. And I look over to my left, and there's a gravestone. And it says, William, quote, quote, unquote, Bill. Uh, gosh, I can't remember his last name. But there it was. There was Bill. I found his grave. I was like, whoa. I actually did find Bill tonight. When I set out, I thought I might find Bill. And what do you know? I found a gravestone that had Bill in quotation marks. It was pretty significant to me. I took a picture of it. I kept it. I don't have it anymore. It was on an old iPhone. But that was amazing to me. I really felt like I had followed my follow my steps really well. I think I was listening to Chinese traditional music at the time as a form of walking meditation. It started out seeing an owl too. Owls were like guiding my path for the first time in my life, which was really cool. Nighttime messengers. So eventually I went home. But these are all the, the routes I'm trying to share that had to do with connecting to my intuitive feeling and following that and trusting that. Trusting God, trusting faith, trusting this uh, synchronistic, non-coincidental uh, amazing thing that was occurring and uh, and how for many many months I did this constantly every day and so I had a huge amount of training in doing this and so by this time that I had got to this heartbreak after these amazing experiences and then been moved to Texas to find that this was the time of a dream when I went off in a direction I knew the directions to go really easily it's where I was drawn to most and so I went where I was drawn to, and I went the direction. Who knew where exactly I was going to go eventually? But I, I think I need to go to this spot. This is where I'll go. And I'll look the whole time for different signs, different feelings. So I need to go off this way. Do I need to go off that way? Oh, look, it's a hawk. What's it trying to tell me? Oh, look, it's this. What's this trying to tell me? You know, I'm just trying to figure out all of those things, the feeling of these motions throughout life. And it was amazing. Phenomenal it was. So following through, following through, following through, following through. <laughs> How amazing. Ah. Finally, I got to a point where I decided, you know, hey, this dream isn't going to come to fruition. It's not going to work. Um, I guess then I'll just find some psychedelics and I'll go off into Joshua Tree into the desert and I'll... I didn't quite know it was desert like that Joshua Tree. I thought there would be a lot of trees where I was going, you know. And uh, it turned out that I went to a BLM there because I didn't have a lot of money. And there was no Joshua trees around, and it was just completely barren BLM, and no shade from the sun, but that doesn't matter. Just before I did that, uh, a, a homeless guy I was talking to, this dirt, one of the dirty kids in San Diego and Ocean Beach, uh, directed me to this uh, store and said, hey, well, they sell mushrooms inside that store. I'm like, what? Oh, they sell salvia. Yeah, that was it. They sell salvia inside that store. I was like, ooh, well, I've never done salvia, but I heard it was really powerful, and I've always wanted to do it, so I went inside the store, and I talked to the woman behind the counter, and in my dream, I had met a girl at a gas station, a little bit different, in this really amazing city, and uh, we just hit it off immediately and started making out, and, and like there was something about her to where she was supposed to lead to the Illuminati or Illumination to some kind of a really amazing thing, and so I was like, I really thought that I might meet this girl, but I figured I wasn't going to meet her. And then what do you know? I go into a store out of nowhere, not even expecting to meet a, a person. And I meet this girl, and she turns out to be the girl from the dream. In a different way, but in the same way. It was really amazing and phenomenal. Even the house she lived in with was, was with a lot of friends. And that was exactly the same in my dream as well. And then inside that house was a doorway, a gateway into illumination. And it turned out that her house was where the four corners of energy met so that I could expand without affecting anything else. I could expand in that spot without affecting other things' karma, so that means I could really rise a huge amount without hurting anything around me, and it was a really amazing thing. Um, because this frequency may not be able to resonate to the frequency I am, like a light bulb and filament, if you send too much uh, electricity through that bulb, it'll break. And so my bulb wasn't able to break because that experience I told you about where I rainbow light exuded out before my body exuded out, every, you know, connecting into all realms of existence, it blasted open all of my channels to where I couldn't be fried. I was exuding the light of the sun, 
You know, I felt like things should bow to me even. I was like, this is amazing. I feel like a god. I feel like a king. This is the most amazing thing what is occurring, you know. But I was always in service, always in service. I bow to all things, always the servant. Just like Jesus said, you know, the most beautiful teaching that Jesus brought was that he washed his disciples' feet. You know, he came to serve, not to be the master. And that's amazing, phenomenal. So I always remember these gorgeous teachings to be humble, to be in humility, to be in service, to never exalt myself on high above anything else. I tell my grandma when she wanted me to raise my class, my, Grandma, I sleep with the worms. That's where my level is, down in the dirt. You know, she's like, you don't need to hang out with those people. You need to be classier. And I'm like, no, I am, you know, down in the dirt with these people. I'm below, you know, wonderful. Thank goodness, you know, my natural state. Super meek and humble. Humility. And, uh, genuinity is humble, by the way. We can speak things of ourselves, and as long as we're honest and authentic, what is more vulnerable than this? You know, they're like saying modesty and fake modesty. I'm being modest so I can hold on to an ego identity. Well, that's silly, you know. It's like, that's a, that's a fake thing. That's a program that you're trying to appear something so that you will be great or the most noble being or however this is. I'm just going to be me, authentic in every way. And uh, like a child, you know, a child wouldn't hold back on what they're saying. You know, they'd be like, yeah, man, I'm amazing. I won this I won this thing over here. I surfed amazing today. I rode my skateboard. Take it out on the best. Whoa. You know, whatever it is, you know. Nobody would judge them for it. So we can be returned to the innocence of children and really open ourselves and our heart. Just because I look like a man and this and that. I am a man. I am an adult. I am a warrior of the heart, you know. But I, I am that I am that I am that I am. And I am all that is. And I'm innocent and pure. And I'm beautiful and I'm perfect. And so are all of you. You know, we can really enjoy the light of ourselves and not be worried about it. We can shine brightly. It's okay. You won't offend me. I'll just empower it. I'll be like, oh man, please keep shining. Keep shining. Doing it. Doing it. Doing it. Unless you're trying to be over something or hurt something. Or take from something in some kind of a way. Then I'm like, oh, you know, you know, maybe not be so, so egoic or whatever I may say. You know, like, ooh, you know, that's that's a path that leads to greater suffering. You know, or, or maybe just like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever you need to do, bro. <laughs> hey, if you need to, if you need to continue suffering, that's your deal. You know? Typically, I'm authentic and direct, but it always changes in every moment, so I can never tell you a rule and how it will ever be, because it's different for every person, everybody. We're all uh, separate in individual frequencies, where we're also not separate in any possible way. It's impossible for us to ever be separate, and uh, so we, but we are unique and distinct, and we do have something going on with ourselves that's really amazing. Excuse me one second. Ah, so... Where were we? <laughs> and so I'd met this girl in this amazing place, and uh, and I'd finally been able to reach these different ceremonies. I went up to the desert after meeting her, and I decided, man, I really like her, I really want to be with her, and I went down to her, and I started having amazing LSD ceremonies. She knew, she knew the hookup, she knew where to get it, and uh, that ceremony was bringing me into huge places. And a salvia as well. Oh my goodness. And I'll never do salvia again, actually. Um, yeah, I, I can't imagine anything ever coming upon me to make me to do that again. It broke the universe and broke my mind. And uh, I got to see it raw and naked, numbered and formed in layers and layers, aisles and aisles and channels and channels. I got to see it in such a pure, basic, simple form, kind of computer-like. It was so scary and frightening that I, I never wish to do it again. <laughs> but that was a test and a big uh, transfer of energy that was absolutely necessary for me. I needed that because that broke me wide open. I realized I could reset in any situation. My mind was screwed up after that. I was so afraid that I would be deleted or taken away or destroyed in some kind of a manner I wasn't sure what was going to happen but that shook me loose so hard from this reality that a crazy amount of curiosity happened to me I could not live my life turning away from whatever the crap that was I was like oh my goodness this fearful insane place what is going on so I couldn't work I couldn't do anything for that I was like oh my goodness I just can't live anymore I can't go on in this world at all 
I have to seek deeper. No matter what it does to me, I have to seek deeper. And so I finally was able to, to do that. And I went uh, to the Sequoia National Forest and, uh, in a place of utter disparity because I'd quit my job. My girlfriend was pissed. My family, you know, who knew I was out of money pretty much. Um, this was like my last hope. And, uh, well, my last check was ridiculous. I was so upset with that. Like, I was working like a slave for nothing. It was like, uh, how many weeks had I worked? It was like $200 or something. I was like, geez, are you kidding me? How many hours did I work? This is ridiculous. I was used to making, at this point, you know, a good amount of money to where, I, like, before I was making like a thousand bucks a week almost. And I was like, geez, this worked for how long and barely had this? I was upset. I just was like, no, man, it's time. I got to do something else. I didn't know what would happen, though. I didn't know if it was a good idea or a bad idea, if uh, something terrible would occur. But I needed it to happen. So I went to the Sequoia National Forest, and I had that amazing experience. I turned on the music after driving for 12 hours or so that day. And I, I took the medicine, set intention. Who am I? What is my purpose? I have to know, like, in a desperate way, like, really saying it, like, please, like, please. What is my purpose? Why am I here? Is there anything that I could do? How can I be for the benefit of everything, of anything? I must know if, if there's any way that I'm setting an intention that's purely for myself, you know, that I wish to, to reach a certain level of understanding so that I could be the benefit. And if that was only purely for me, that it right my path and that it that it makes the intention true in me, that I truly do do this uh, outside of my ego and for the benefit of everything. If, if my ego is the thing that wants this, then overwrite it and, and write my path and put me in the correct place. But please, I must know who am I? What is my purpose? What am I here to do? Can I help just one being? All these crazy things were coming through. But it was all that was there for me. I didn't have anything else to say. It was the most natural and pure thing to be saying. I could have said what I thought it wanted me to say or what I thought somebody else would want me to say, but that's not what could come through for me at that time. I was in such a scared, sad, depressed, utter despair, <laughs> yeah, utter disparity, this insane place, that those were only words that could come from me. Authentic as fuck, that's for sure. And that's how it, I like to keep it, you know? The only words that are here for me in this moment are the words that I'm saying. There's no extra words. I say every word. I don't leave any of it in thought or anything like that. I just, I give it all. I don't hold any of it back. You don't miss any of them. I keep, I give them all to you. Fuck, shit, damn, whatever it is, I give them all to you. You know, I don't hold them back. And thank goodness for that experience to help me with that. And so it took me through all kinds of frequencies. I could feel all the frequencies of the car for throughout the day occurring. I couldn't get out to set up my tent because I was afraid of grizzly bears, but I was determined to have this experience no matter what. And, uh, and I sat in the middle of the back seat because I was afraid to go by the windows, and I had started it out with crystals and with a uh, really bright white light that to me was supposed to signify a UV light in some way. So I used it uh, on my eyes in the pitch black of the night. I turned on a freaking extremely bright light and looked into it, blinded myself. Oh my goodness, I couldn't see at all. Everything was pitch black for a long time. I didn't think my vision was coming back. I thought I was completely blind. And now the fear was great. I mean, insanely great. If I was afraid of grizzly bears before, I was really afraid now. My one thought was like, it'll be okay because even though I'm way out on this BLM that nobody goes back to so nobody will find me there ain't other any other people around you know uh i have food inside the car that i put inside this uh this bin and i think i left that food there too i didn't keep it with me i just put it in that bin and left it there um which is an interesting thing too because that actually could have drawn them to me but um anyways yeah now i couldn't drive away if they showed up i was blind there was no way i could drive away and they could definitely punch through a, a window i was like oh my goodness i'm super afraid super scared i don't know what's going on in deep 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 fear i started to feel all the vibrations of the car somehow all the vibrations that happened in that day from the day of driving were still reverberating throughout the car they were still moving throughout the car i don't know how this was occurring but all of them, I could feel them all as if I was driving still. 
It's like, oh my goodness, what is going on? And they started to pierce through me. I thought maybe the music was too much. I turned it off. But then the, the loudness of the vibrations that were occurring around me inside of the metal around me was too great. To where I was like, okay, I'd rather, I'd rather the music on than, than to hear all this crazy, empty, insane noise. So I turned it back on. And man, it was just starting to go inside of me, hurting me really messing me up. I was like, oh my goodness, I could feel them moving through me in a way that felt like they were melting my insides, like I was being microwaved from the inside out. This was awful, terrible. Man, this occurred for hours. I tried to roll down the window and put my face out and breathe, tried to see if I could get some kind of a reprieve. I put the window back up there, manual, and then I opened up the door and I, I'd go outside for a second and see if I could possibly, you know, be outside and, and be all right, but no, 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 no. I was way too afraid to stay outside. I had the car running in somewhere and sometimes I'd turn it off, I'd run it, I'd turn it off, I'd run it. Whatever I do to keep lights on or however I could do it. And I'd get outside and my fear for grizzly bears was so great, was so great. Even though it was a reprieve, I'd have to put myself back inside the death chamber because I was way too afraid of attracting a bear and being killed by a bear. So I just got back into the hellish existence that was my death zone. And I was sure I was going to die, that I couldn't sustain it. I was fighting as hard as I could. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I realized, I was like, oh, no. I'm going to die on LSD in the Sequoia National Forest inside of a car. My parents are going to know that this is how I've died. I, I'm a loser. I've lost it all. I can't believe it. I never thought I would die this way. I'm so embarrassed. I've always tried to just, you know, be accepted by everything in some way. Do something that would make them proud. But instead, here I am, screwed myself completely. Now I'm going to die for sure, and they're going to find my body in this car. Oh my goodness. But I tried one last thing. I was like, oh no, I can open the back of my seat. I can pull it down. I can crawl in my trunk. Maybe I can get reprieve in my trunk, and then I would be safe from grizzly bears, and I would be in the trunk of the car, perhaps safe from these frequencies that are microwaving me in the cab of this vehicle. I was in a Ford Escort. So I pulled it down, and I crawled in the trunk of the car, on my stomach and there was no reprieve oh my last idea what else there's no more route to go there's nothing i could do now i'm for sure done for and so what else did i have to do at that point i couldn't fight anymore my energy was gone there's nothing i could do it wasn't going to cease i was screwed i was definitely going to die so i just laid limp i decided i just gave up I was like, well, I'm fucked. That's it. And I just rested into it. Allowed myself to die. And then immediately upon doing this, I did this strange movement where I flipped over myself in this really peculiar fashion. Like as my body was straight, I went over myself like this. My head straight across my stomach completely flexible in a way that was impossible for me to be flexible to. Even to this day, I've never been so flexible. I went, <sighs> like this, this was the motion. I rolled over myself. <sighs> and I was back on my stomach somehow. Passed out. Laid limp again. And then again. <sighs> back on my stomach. And then again. <sighs> back 